Hey everyone, you are currently watching the third part of my CSS for Beginners course and in this video you are going to learn 5 different types of selectors, what they mean and how to use them with CSS. This part is very important to understand the basics of CSS, so please keep watching till the end of the video. Before we begin, if you want to learn more about web development, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification so when I upload a video, you should get notified. Now, if you are ready, let's get started. Alright, so let's talk about first what a selector is. Selectors are being used to target one or more HTML tags to apply our CSS rules. And this can be done in many different ways. There are different kinds of selectors in CSS. And here are the five main selectors that we can use for targeting HTML tags as element, ID, class, attribute, and universal selectors. It's better to explain them directly in code, so let's jump to our editor and see how to use them. So as you recall from the last video, we have four H1 tags with the same rules applied, and you can see the same colors here because of the selector type here, which is known as the element selector. The element selector targets one type of an HTML tag, H1 here for example, and applies the exact same rules to all of the H1 tags in our document. If I go back here and change this to P for example, and add here two P tags, this time the rules will be only applied to the P tags but not to the H1 tags anymore. So this is basically what the element selector does. The next selector type is the ID selector. The ID selector basically targets an element with a specified ID. To give an ID to an HTML element, I come here and we need to write the ID attribute and then give it a name. First headline. And we write the name of the ID and put a hash in front of the name. Because without hash, we can't select it. So we need to put the hash here. Alright, so far you have seen to target all of the same elements at once, or only one single element. There is another selector type and is the most used one in daily programming, which is the class selector. A class selector targets one or multiple elements at once with a specific class attribute and regardless of their tag names. So for example, when I give to the p tag a class name, my first class, typing dash between the words is the common naming for a CSS class. Now the class selector will target each element which has the my first class class name. So I go back here and type my first class. I will give a color of blue. But this time I need to put here a period instead of a hash so the element can take the rules applied here. And also if I give the same class name to different elements or to different HTML tags, we will see that the tag names with the same class name will also have a blue color, like this. So the class selector can target one or multiple elements, even if they are different type of tags. Another type of selector in CSS is the attribute selector. The attribute selector targets elements with a specified attribute and a value this type of selector can be useful on input fields, for example, or in form fields. So let's clear this part here. And as an example, I am defining two input fields. One with the type of text and another with the type of number. Alright, so this is the number input field and this is the text input field. And with the attribute selector, I can give different styles, each of them based on their attribute types. So when I want to write a CSS rule for number inputs, for example, I need to define an attribute selector here by writing after the name of the tag inside brackets by writing the name of the attribute and then its value, which is number. And inside the curly braces, I can give a CSS rule. This rule here will be only applied to the number input field. The last important selector I would like to mention on this video is the universal selector. The universal selector 
targets all of the elements on the page at once and applies all of them the same rules. You may be need to use that only for resetting the padding's margins of each element that comes default and maybe for applying if the project is going to use the same rules like font family or font size and so on. To define a universal selector, we use only the asterisk character. And I will give here, for example, a font size of 20 pixels. So each element will have a size of 20 pixels, like that. So this is basically what the universal selector does. Now let's see what happens here if I give them a color of green, for example. Now what happened here is that I've defined a green color to all of the elements, but only two of them has taken this rule and the others remain the same. So why is that? Well, this has happened because there is a hierarchy between selectors and combinators that even experienced developers don't know that good, which means that some of the CSS selectors have a priority on the other ones. We can also define new rules by combining these selectors and you will learn them in my following videos. If you find this video useful, please like and share. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.